Good day, I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, August 14, 2024. A state of public emergency, SOE, has been declared for the parish of Clarendon following the fatal terror attack in the parish, which claimed the lives of eight persons. The announcement was made at a joint press briefing earlier today by Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang. He says the move is also based on informed assessment that high levels of criminal activities experienced in the specified area is of such nature and extent that it endangers public safety. The minister reports that murders being committed in Clarendon are attributed to reprisal, intimidation and the dominance of turf. He hopes this SOE will bear similar success as the security measure instituted in the parish last year. A state of emergency was declared on the 23rd of November 2023 in Clarendon and expired on the 6th of December 23. During this period, the division experienced one shooting incident only. This amounts a reduction of 100% in murder and 50% in shooting incident over the 14-day period when compared to an equivalent period of time prior to the SOE dealing with three murders and two shootings in the recorded. This state of public emergency comes not only as a single act. The government will be attacking gangs in all sections of Jamaica. Meanwhile, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey says significant progress is being made in the investigations with one firearm seized and five persons now in custody. DCP Bailey says intelligence has revealed that the individuals are connected to at least six violent incidents in Clarendon. We are committed in removing those responsible from, those responsible from our streets and to restoring public confidence and trust in our ability to keep Jamaicans safe. A $25 million fund has been established to incentivize the provision of credible information that will lead to the arrest and a charge of persons involved in the Sunday night attack in Clarendon. It also includes the recovery of firearms and ammunition. The fund is in the Ministry of National Security. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this is another layer in the measures being taken to rid the country of organized armed violence and the persons who are sheltering the perpetrators. The breakdown includes a pool of $6 million towards information leading to the arrest and a charge of criminal gang suspects. This will trigger a payout of $1 million per arrested person. $5 million is for aiding in investigations leading to the arrest and charge of facilitators of criminal gang activities. This has a maximum payout of $1.5 million per person arrested. We are particularly interested in the facilitators and the organizers. The facilitators, those who provided the weapons or gave access to the weapons and ammunition, access to the motor vehicle, organized, made the telephone calls, made the connections. We are particularly interested in those persons. Funds are also earmarked for intelligence leading to the recovery of firearms and ammunition and the supply network with a maximum payout of $500,000 per firearm seized. A pool of $5 million is allocated for securing evidence in the investigation of criminal gangs, paying up to $250,000 per case. Another $5 million will support the gathering of information on persons who are harboring criminal gang members and their associates. This has a maximum payout of $800,000 per case. Prime Minister Holness is encouraging persons to call Crime Stop at 311, Police Emergency 119, NIB Tip Line 811, the Mocha Tip Line at 888 Mocha Tip. That's 888 662 2847, or the JDF Tip Line at 837 8888. In other news, Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, has welcomed the wave of new investments the country continues to experience, which he says is good for the economy. Minister Hill was speaking at the official launch of the luxury residential development Spyglass in St. Andrew on the weekend. I'm very happy because of the export end of this. Yes, Jamaicans are buying, but there are people from overseas who are buying these developments. That is a balance of payment plus. It builds the balance of payment which 
It's the first time in 20 or 30 years, last year we had a positive balance of payment. So this is a plus to it because foreigners are bringing in hard currency to buy property in Jamaica. And a lot of, of that is going on. The Spyglass project comprises a mix of apartments and townhouses and represents an extraordinary blend of modern elegance, innovative design and world-class amenities. Senator Hill says it is important that Jamaica has construction companies that are capable of building to the highest standards to support the continued development of the country. Jamaica has to change and change to make sure we have a better place and better incomes for our people. This kind of construction, where people get paid well, paid on time, and the buildings are sold, make sure that we will get to a better place. Business persons will soon be able to access more of the company's Office of Jamaica services online. Manager for the Anti-Money Laundering Unit, Inga Hainsley Bennett, says the full online expansion of its services will take place by the end of March 2025. And so our online services will expand to our annual return filings. It will expand to our company director's appointments, our secretary appointments, change of registered office address, and even for companies who wish to allot new shares. So the suite of our online services will cover all our compliance, all our maintenance documents for companies and business names. Persons will be able to register new businesses and renew existing ones online without having to visit the COJ's physical location. The online space is to be further enhanced with more use of artificial intelligence and how-to videos. We have launched and will be launching additional videos short videos on how to file an annual return, how to complete an annual return, so that persons can watch, re-watch, so they can understand what to do in a simple, easy to use presentation. These improvements will be rolled out during the course of this financial year. And finally, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has welcomed the official twinning of the city of Natterre in France with Jamaica's historic city, Spanish Town. At a signing recently in the French city, Minister Bartlett said the agreement paved the way for a range of collaborative initiatives in areas such as culture, arts, education, sports and economic development. He said the move promised to strengthen cultural ties and unlock new tourism opportunities between the two cities. In addition, Minister Bartlett said the twinning initiative was a significant milestone in our cultural diplomacy efforts. He asserted that it created a platform for enriching cultural exchanges, fostering stronger people-to-people -people connections, and promoting Jamaica's rich heritage to a new audience. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching.